Hey y'all, Rich Moses here. I'm not gonna lie, I made several very heavy-handed bets on Bitcoin, and now the channel is in dire straits. I've had to sell two of my yachts and several gold chains just to make ends meet and to keep my servants employed. I've left a link to Patreon down below that will help me continue to make the content that you love. YouTube demonetization is making things a little bit hard, but really that Bitcoin thing really screwed me. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and now let's jump right in. Hello and welcome to the second episode of PUBG Dailies. I am WTF Moses, and uh, we're going to be taking a look at your boy Ross today. Uh, we are going to be playing on Miramar, and uh, Ross here has waited fairly long in the plane path. Um, before we get started, I just want to say uh, thank you guys for tuning in to watch. Uh, if you're looking for live gameplay or are interested in watching me play live, uh, I play all my games on Twitch at twitch.tv slash WTF Moses. I've also left a link to the Patreon down below. Uh, it will go a long way to helping support the channel. YouTube demonetization is hitting pretty hard these days, but no big deal. Let's get ready to jump right into it. So uh, let's uh, join Ross here as he descends into the game. So opting for this edge of the map, not something I've ever done, but we'll see what, maybe he's looking for a vehicle. Doesn't, I don't see any vehicles, so I'm imagining, oh, there, nope, still nothing. All right, so he was looking for a car. I don't think he got one. So he's going to have to turn back. He's got that fancy white coat on. And he's just not seeing any cars, I don't think. So that's kind of the issue when you land looking for a car. Sometimes you just don't get the spawn. And then you're kind of stuck looting these crappy little compounds. Um, looks like he should do okay uh, just getting the initial starting loot, but um, depend like this this player is rated a little bit higher. He's got a 1700 rating um, So this compound has been fairly good to him so far got himself an AR already not a lot of ammo or anything else like that No armor yet, um, but he's just grabbing what he can SKS as well, so a little lucky on the RNG for the loot. So good job. I guess <laughs> as far as being lucky goes so I think with uh, with higher ratings, what you'll see is a, as, as players either choose to land for kills, uh, which is kind of my preferred my preferred gameplay is to land for excitement, go for some early game kills. So I land in places like Picado, San San Martin, Water Treatment, Power Grid, that kind of area. But for pure rating gain, uh, you want to live as long as possible, and landing safe, like uh, like Ross has done here is probably the best way to gain rating or to climb the leaderboards because if you look at it there's already 54 people left alive that's you know half the servers are already dead and he hasn't even seen anybody else yet he's got a few people around him but he's essentially alone like for several hundred meters in every direction we will rejoin ross here as he is now moved into pozo Still running. Decent gear. Level 2 helmet, level 2 vest, level 3 backpack, SKS, and an M16. He's heard a couple of footsteps here. So we'll slow it back down. So just kind of... I'll, he's covered here, which is fine, but he's... You know, chilling. Outside the zone. Taking damage. Hearing vehicles. I think... Mr. Sparkle might have heard some footsteps as well, but right now it looks like Ross is just inclined to play passively. He can hear those shots, so he has an idea that there's someone close to him. And Mr. Sparkle actually does take down Lumpy Lizard there, so Mr. Sparkle's likely going to run for that vehicle. And Ross is is just playing relatively passively here. Oh, I think he, did he spot him? Oh, he he. Okay, so just avoided conflict so far there. Um, inclined to let that player run past him. He m might take some shots here. So it does land the initial headshot onto Sparkle, but does not appear to be able to follow up. So he's got that M4 half kitted, but, uh, unable to convert on that kill there. Still putting lots of pressure. I think Ross wasted a little bit of time there um, playing passively. I think if you're listening to those shots, 
Those, if you hear, if you hear those silent shots, you got to know that that guy's distracted. You could probably push up a little bit further rather than hanging back passive, and you could potentially secure that kill a little faster, uh, or at all, I guess in this case. Um, but regardless, I mean, you're outside the zone. You want to be kind of decisive. Uh, the zone is now significantly far away and has finished its transition, so it's doing a little bit more damage than it was a minute ago. So Ross is now under pressure to jump on the three-seater and, and move on. Opting for the safe route. <laughs> oh my god. Almost kills himself. Very nearly kills himself there on the three-seater. That's where... Oh, there's Mr. Sparkle now coming back. Oh no, he's a little further away. Mr. Sparkle's pretty far away. So, nearly kills himself on the three-seater because he was avoiding the road. Doesn't want to switch out. Doesn't want to switch out for the truck. Um, interesting choice to stay off-road on the three-seater. Obviously, he didn't learn his lesson the first time around. Um, but, uh, yeah, just opting to stay on the three-seater and flips again. Upside down. Doing some more damage to himself, so... Really inclined to stay on the three-seater. Looks like he's given up. <laughs> uh, three-seater has escaped him. Now looking at the map. We saw this with the other uh, the other replay, but he's transitioning into the edge of the zone here. And there are several players around that area. Here comes Mr. Sparkle again. Maybe. Can he make it? Shooting. Okay. One quick thing to point out. I'll just back it up just a hair. Alright. So he's standing here. Oh, we lost him. He's he's standing here on the edge of the zone. Well, near the edge of the zone. Well. Alright, well. The only thing that I want to point out is it's not a grave danger, but standing like this at half health. Shooting at a target with a red dot that's like two or three hundred meters away in zero cover in front of a bunch of buildings near the edge of the zone is a little bit dangerous. Um, uh, it's not something I would say don't do, but just got to be mindful. Like I would, I would maybe position myself up a little further up the hill rather than, you know, on the side of it. But whatever. All right, so. Oh, maybe, maybe. I don't know why he's double tapping it, but regardless, uh, so far he's wasted a pretty significant amount of meds. Um, I, I imagine he has them to spare at this point, but he spent a very long time out of the zone and he's not given himself any time. Like the circle's about to transition again. He's only got 15 seconds to get in. So he's going to be behind the eight ball almost the entire way through just based on this one. Okay. Well, he picked himself up a key. That's just a, that's just bad luck for solo queue hero there. Uh, but he's probably netted himself some extra meds, which is going to be good. But, uh, Ross, I think, it, you know, mishandled the use of the three seater. Like the three seater will, will screw you in almost every situation. So it, I'm not blaming him for having only one vehicle to use, but he did drive by that other car. He could have easily stopped to grab and then just transitioned into the zone, but he chose not to. Not sure why. Um, and he's left himself at a disadvantage health-wise for almost the entire game. Like, there's only 23 people left. Um, so picking up his first kill with 24, 25 people remaining... Uh, he hasn't really participated in the game so far, but that's, you know, that's that's fine. I'm not saying that's a bad strategy. Ultimately, the idea is to be the last man standing. That doesn't mean you have to be roaming around looking for kills. Um, but uh, he's put some he's put significant pressure on himself, at least in the in the department of meds, by spending so much time out of the zone. Like, this, the zone has already started moving. So he's going to have to jump on this other three-seater now, likely. Um, that's his game plan. Uh, and get into the and get into the zone here because that it's gonna start ticking even harder now <laughs> Okay, clearly clearly Ross is not a master of the three-seater. He's just gonna choose to like oh. oh Okay, I was like what 
I, and the reason why he did that apparently is that if you shoot at one of the front tires on the minibus, it drives better. Which is... That's... It is what it is. Alright, we made it. We are in the zone. With only 18 left alive, your boy Ross has made it into the play zone and is no longer taking his own damage. So, Dragon's Nest, just up the way there, Ross cannot see him. Oh, well, maybe he, if he was looking, but... Um... More boosts. I, he's he's got to be rough on meds here. He's going to have to start picking up some kills. All right. So he, he might be able to see dragons and that stuff there, but he's just not looking. You can see that moving dot. Like we have the, like even, even without the UI, he should have probably spotted him by now. Like, you can see him moving, like, he's just jumping around on top of that ridge completely. There he is. So, he's now, he's now spotted him, but that took him a little bit long. No big deal. I, I do that all the time, too. It's important to look at the edges of your screen a lot, especially on Miramar. Oh, you spot another guy here. Nice. Nice. Good long shots with the M4 there. I liked how he put pressure on the guy at the rock so he would go back behind cover so he could finish that first kill. I'm not sure if that was intentional, but that's what it looked like to me. Like he put pressure on the guy at the rock there. He put pressure on the rock so the guy retreated backwards and then he finished the kill. So he managed to get both kills. So I like it. Uh, not a huge fan of running backwards out of cover after that gunfight. He saw that guy up there, so I'm not sure if he's trying to pay attention to him or what. He's looking behind him, but he's just running through the... Oh, yeah. Also, uh, don't jump. Jumping just slows you down. That That's not gaining you anything. Maybe he's looking at the edge of the zone for, for more people, but he's so far out of cover, it wouldn't have mattered anyway. He would have been shot by now. Yeah, he's jumping too much. So definitely probably wanting some meds. Okay. I wish we could open their inventories to see what they were getting. Sounds like meds for the most part. A couple attachments here and there. Did he ditch the SKS? Yeah, he did. Oh, he's always switching out to the mini. Okay, well, interesting choice. Um, spending a lot of time looting. Taking more zone damage, but I think he, uh, I think he probably needed whatever they had. So I'm not going to fault him too much for that. He's now got himself a, a kitted mini and an M4. His armor and backpack are in good shape. He probably picked up some meds as well. So I'm not going to fault him too much for that loot. Um, aside, yeah, he's got a bit of distance to cover. A lot of people on the low edge of the zone here. A lot of people ha hugging the hugging the edge here. being cautious in his movement but he's not really progressing well he's slowly progressing towards the new zone but he's just being I think he's being cautious of the guy he saw up here um who is still relatively close by so good awareness but uh there we go uh I think he's trying I think he's being cautious of this run down this hill oh he can hear those shots as well He's going to go right at Dragon's Nest here. Nade comes out. Mm. I would have I would have not naded probably. I would have not naded. That just that just uh notifies Dragon's Nest that there's somebody nearby. So Dragon's Nest is now in the open. You got to take these shots here. You got to take these shots. Yeah, he might not even see him. He he must not see he must not have seen him. Like he's what? Like he? Okay, hold on a second. So he's he's looking for Dragon's Nest right now, right? Like he's just running around. He is a sitting duck right here. Like all like Dragon's Nest. If if he had any inclination whatsoever to turn around, like look at how open. Like you have nowhere to go, nowhere to go. Not to mention he's out geared. This guy's got level three helmet, level three vest. 
um, compensated at M4. So your boy Ross has left himself wide in the open here after throwing that grenade. If I'm Dragon's Nest and I hear that nade go off behind me, I know there's someone chasing me. So I just sit at that tree and wait. Um, obviously, the zone is now changing as well. So maybe Dragon's Nest is thinking that he has to make it to the zone, which is also a smart play because even if even if your boy Ross decided to engage here, he's technically at a disadvantage because all Dragon's Nest needs to do is get to that next tree and return fire. And there's nowhere, nowhere for, for Ross to go here at all. I'm surprised he hasn't been shot yet, to be fair. Yeah, just really indecisive, very cautious behavior, looking around a lot. There we go. So that's 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 what I expected to happen. Luckily, it wasn't a headshot, but did chunk him pretty good. So Ross is now receiving fire from multiple people. He's just he's stopped and is now firing. Uh, you gotta you gotta get to cover, Ross. Oh boy, you're in trouble. All right, so zone's on him. That's not good. Got that med off. He doesn't have long to go, but he's coming into a into a bit of a mix here. So he can hear Dragon's Nest coming in slow. I think he's trying to avoid the fight, but he's just taken so much zone damage through this game. Like that fight is right next to him, and he's got nothing. I, th I think he's being smart here, aside from the fact that he's laying prone in the open. Uh, a lot of people know where he is. Dragon's Nest has just not turned around, but this guy, this this Gen Rally Broke guy, might see him. He should see him. Oh, he doesn't see him. All right, takes a takes a shot at him there. Still prone in the open. Not a huge fan. He's got to get moving. Okay, you can see him again, switches out. They both see each other, both aware of each other's presence. Lands a nice headshot there. Rally Brooks in trouble, but he's got a med. Rally Rally broke, I should say. Holds the same angle. You gotta you gotta rotate here. You can't stay still. You gotta rotate up that hill. There we go. He's got no helmet. You can't, you can't, hold on a second. You cannot, you should, or sorry, you should not hold a wide peak on a car 98. So luckily, luckily for our, our, our boy Ross here, Rally Broke is actually disengaging because he's got no helmet. But that car 98 is a big, big threat. And trying to hold a peak battle with a car 98 in a, in a higher ranking match will often lead to you getting smoked. Um, unless you can, uh, you know, you're, you're working with the mini, which has a fairly bad dispersion now. Like you can't really line up those two taps super easy um you have to wait almost a full second between shots to really get that second accurate shot and that full second could just be a bloop right through your noggin there so um careful with those and he probably should have rotated after that damage just use that time where you know they're gonna med to get up the hill into a better spot because he could just kind of rotate here and take this angle on the rock uh or at least get into a position of cover or rotate around this way or something like that just use that use that time given to you to to get yourself into a better position All right, 30 seconds almost up on the uh, on the next circle. He hasn't seen him. That's a bug. I'm pretty sure that's a bug. Still checking the same rock. So he hasn't seen any more movement. Uninformed grenade. Probably wouldn't have thrown that. That was just, was just a wasted grenade. All that does is give everyone around you more information. Got to be very careful with how much information you put out into the map. Rally Broke, I think, has now rotated back. Looks like he has. Yeah, so Rally Broke heard that grenade. And he's got to know that because that nade exploded around here, that he's at least closed this gap to the point where he's within throwing distance. So he could be in this general area, uh, uh, you know, for Rally Broke. But uh, Ross has given that information out for free. So he spot him out first. Good kill. I like it. Took a lot of time, and now he's got you know the zone pressing him again. He can't really stop and do anything. But I don't think Rally Broke had anything he needed anyway. Might have wanted to switch out to the car 98, but just doesn't have time. Oh, 
Not a lot of cover here. That's kind of Miramar in a nutshell, but uh, looks like he spotted Captain Cass way over there. Two more zone ticks. I think we might actually finally see a fight here between Dragon's Nest and uh, and our boy Ross here. So seven left alive. He's wide in the open. No cover. Running around jumping. Giving all sorts of visual information out. He's rotating into the smaller portion of the gap, which is a standard move. The one thing I will say is he hasn't taken too much actual, uh, aside from like a couple of shots from the SKS and the Car 98, he hasn't actually taken too much direct damage yet. So I think his armor is probably like 50%, maybe less, depending on how many body shots actually landed. And he's going to come across Benjamin Adam here. Oh, heard him. So Benjamin Adam actually did him a bit of a favor there. So when you come across someone behind a fence, let them break the fence. Let them break the fence. So, like, these things break in these sections. What I like to do is I like to flank to the right, let them break the fence, and then lean. Lean out and shoot at them. Because any more shots are going to come into the fence and get soaked by the fence while you're shooting away from it. So, uh, obviously, that's super situational and easy for me to say. But try not to be the first one shooting the fence. Um, and that's... That's what I've tried to do. It, it's It's been functional for me. It, not, it might not work in every single situation. But I've often been caught out shooting fences and then the guy will return fire and kill me. So um, that just worked out in his favor. Uh, that's just a little tidbit I like to I like to do personally. I'm not sure if that's going to work for everybody, though. So no time to loot. Continues to run. Playing on the edge of the zone, but he's really not utilizing the terrain to his advantage. He, he could have... Yeah, I think he's just recognized that now. Yeah. Uh, nope. He's just continuing to... All right. So, I would have gone this way. You've got the ridge cover. Anyone at that tree, anyone over on this... Anyone, essentially... Like, look at how much is looking at him right now. You've got all this open area. Now, that's just Miramar. But if he comes this way, instead, he can at least come up to this rock. And then down to this little ridge. You know, even if he, even if he takes fire, he can prone. But he can come up to this rock. He can take a look at there. He can see the tree a little bit better. He can also come down this way. There's a lot more cover in this area, this way. He's opting to run the edge of the zone for safety, which I understand. But he's put himself in this wide open position, which could potentially get him in trouble. Because all all this guy has to do right here is peek this is peek this edge right here, and you're dead. There's no like if if I'm here, you're dead. There's nowhere for you to go. Maybe you make it to the rock, but it's on the edge of the zone, and I have the advantage on you. So Ross needs to come this way. Like, look at the difference. I, I have this angle from here, or I have this angle. So you have to recognize that when you're running the edge of the zone. Um, similarly, you know, if I'm at this tree, you're dead. So Ross has chosen, in my opinion, the worst path right here uh, to get to the zone. Because even if he turns in a little bit, you know... This is this is to the zone. This comes into the zone right here. That's 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 optimal in my opinion. He's cutting cross slow, but yeah, maybe you might think someone's there. Yeah, he's got to cut down on the jumping. Not paying a single stitch of attention to that to that shack. He is completely ignoring the shack. Yeah, and I got him killed. All right, so let's just uh, run that back a little bit. So you, at this point, even though it's late in the game. Like, the zone's on the move. Look at how close the shack is to the zone. Like, Captain Cass here is, is, is camping, no doubt. Got himself a level 3 vest. You know, not great gear. Just chilling. But his path to the zone is, like, less than... Is about 50 meters. All right? So, a very easy run. Especially with the zone not quite on top of him yet. And it's moving slower on this side. Because if you remember... 
the zone will move faster the larger the gap between the old and new play zone. So that right here, the circle is moving fastest. Here, the circle, well, here, the circle is moving slowest. So here it's running at about medium speed. So it's very easy to beat that zone without taking any damage. Ross stopped out of cover to shoot at chops, right? Um, if he had taken a little bit more time and come over here and shot, he's got the same angle in cover. So even if any, not to mention he's in the zone. So if he comes up here, takes that shot and, and uh, captain Cass has to run out to the zone. He can have both of those shots in cover in a much better spot. Uh, the only thing you would have to worry about is, is dragon's nest and, and this guy over here, but he's got no idea they're there. And if he takes fire, all he's got to do is rotate behind the rock and down this hill because he's got cover there as well. So he would have cleared out this entire area of the zone for himself. If Captain Cass dies, there is no one here to contest him whatsoever. Again, that's information that we have and he doesn't. But that's just a, that's just a plus, right? Because you have to also think of, um, you know, just the, the best possible next steps. He clears out Captain Cass. The zone is done. He can then rotate down this way. He's got lots of ridges to use to get to where Chops is because he's just cleared out another guy there. Mr. Sparkle. Um... They're actually right next to each other. Mr. Sparkle uh, would be the next one on the chopping block there. And that's just another fight. Who knows how that goes? But really that pathing and essentially his movement in and pacing really kind of cost him that game. He took a ton of damage from the zone. So to kind of recap the things I would change if I was Ross. A, I would be a lot more efficient in the early game and mid game with not taking as much zone damage and just getting to the play zone. I understand that he landed without a vehicle, lost some RNG there, and that's fine. Um, but I think he took some unnecessary damage there. Um, and, and really the three seater motorcycle didn't do many favors. He had the option to take the road or to at least switch vehicles and didn't do it. And then in the end game, I think his time management was a little bit on the, on the poor side. Uh, you know, I had a comment on one of the, on the last video saying like, what if people are intentionally late to the zone? Well, that's fine. But if you're intentionally late to the zone, you're intentionally giving yourself less, less room for decision-making and, uh, and really just understanding that critical critical pathing in the end game like this can mean the difference between getting caught out by a guy who shouldn't have killed you and then you know netting yourself two free kills almost i would say you know that one was free for sure this one would have been at least informed because you're taking a longer range fight with the m4 versus the ak that sh you should win that fight most of the time and then you can move on from there because during this transition I mean, look at how look how far like no one's in the new play zone. It's almost actually nobody's in the new play zone. There's no one who is already centered in the new zone or at least got a decent position. You know, uh, even if he doesn't take shots at chops, Mr. Sparkle shoots. Then he's aware of his position. Over here, Ramathan has to run out of cover into the new zone. Mr. Sparkle can shoot at him, and then it's Dragon's Nest over here. So uh, I think he had a path to win this game, but it's just that this little mistake, this little mistake in pathing, is what cost him. So uh, that's kind of it uh, for this one. I will now open it up to the chat for questions.